What what made you um want to speak to us today? On um, it would be his fiftieth birthday, correct? Yes, it would be his fiftieth birthday. He was born September twenty uh, first, nineteen seventy one, at St. Luke's Hospital. David was born with severe combined immunodeficiency disease, known by the fearsome acronym SCID. Um, all children born with SCID prior to David had been doomed to die in infancy. Uh, we lost a son, David Joseph, age seven months in 1970. Before he passed away, he, he was diagnosed with SCID. So preparation began. Once they knew I was carrying a boy uh, about seven months, uh, preparation began uh, to deliver David uh, into a germ-free environment in the event that he did have skid. At the time, skid was a 50-50 chance that a son born would be afflicted. With a daughter, it was 50% chance that she would be a carrier. So um, the bubbles were designed, constructed in time for his birth. Um, David had, it was a germ-free delivery, which is unique in itself. And he was taken by way of a cesarean section so as not to pass through the birth canal. And he was removed, taken from me and placed into this bubble that was just a, a few feet from the operating table, from the delivery table. And I had watched David placed into this bubble and I had watched as one doctor baptized David, which was my only request, and the other doctor seal the bubble. He was then whisked away to Texas Children's Hospital. Actually, it was the Clinical Research Center at Texas Children's Hospital. And David was a patient of Texas Children's Hospital um, until he passed. So he did come home often. And so I'm very, very proud to and very happy that David lived at home, that we raised our son. We had complete support um, and help from Texas Children's Hospital. There was an enormous team of physicians, researchers, nurses, staff, neighbors, media that were all involved in creating for David the best life that we could. And I believe we did. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Ms. Demerit, I, I actually interviewed you uh, once before. And since that, since that interview, um, I've become a mom to two boys. And it means a lot more to me now that you're speaking to me because I can understand that um, the pain that you feel from his loss is probably still very much with you. And I can just respect that you're still wanting to speak out Um as something that's still good for your son. It's still um, bringing uh, very positive memories back of, of him. And I really respect that. And I'm very thankful that you're speaking to me today. I am um, proud of David's life. I'm very proud to share his story. I'm grateful uh, for the advances that have been made uh, because of David. And perhaps Dr. Davis can speak of that, but, um, you know, in the beginning, in the 1970s, very little was known. So, and David knew that there would be a, a chance for to be removed. He knew that science was working very hard to not to find a cure for him, but not only just for David, but for the thousands and thousands of other patients who live with primary immunodeficiency disease. PI is the umbrella of SCID. SCID is the most severe, but there are a lot of other issues with the immune system. So uh, there is something that's very uh, special to me, and that is shortly after David passed away, Dr. Ralph Feigen, who is physician in chief at Texas Children's, our beloved Dr. Feigen, and our beloved Dr. William Shear, who is David's physician, presented an idea to David's family, and that was to create the David Center. 
so that all children born with faulty or compromised immune systems can be routed to the David Center, be treated, and in most cases go home um, well. What does that um, mean to you for the families that get to take their children home because of that? Well, I have embraced many children born with SCID that have been treated not just at the David Center, but you know throughout the United States. And um, I, I am so, and, and they want to thank David through me and say to David's mom how honored they are to know that David sacrifices what it has meant to their children and to their family. And I am overwhelmed with pride and joy. The sorrow of losing my sons is ever present, of course, but what their lives have meant to others that has been expressed to me uh, has been, has brought me and David's father and his sister great joy. As it should. Thank you for everything that you've done. My pleasure. I don't have any other uh, questions that I have planned, but if you'd like to tell me anything else or if anybody else on the call has anything else that you think we should talk about, um, that, those are all the questions that I had for you. Okay, well, I um, would really love to say that um, David's life uh, really impacted um, millions of people around the world because through his life and death, we learned about the immune system and we began to understand uh, things about the immune system that impacted not only children with primary immunodeficiency and adults with primary immunodeficiency, but um, people with AIDS, cancer, and other immune diseases. Because of David's contribution, we now can offer a cure to children who have these diseases. Um, and so I, I really uh, want to uh, express the impact that David's life has, has made. The David Center has seen um, close to 15,000 children since its founding five years ago. And we're really proud of that uh, contribution to the community. Do those children come from all over the world and all parts of the country? They come from all over the world. So we have patients that come internationally to our center. And in the United States, there are approximately 50,000 um, children who, and people who have primary immunodeficiencies. Um, there could be as many as actually half a million throughout the world. But we do see patients internationally in that center. We also have, um, after David's uh, death, founded the William T. Shearer Center for Human Immunobiology that currently um, does experiments to perform better diagnostic um, methods, advances in treatment, and, uh, and discovery of novel diseases. So we're really excited about that as well. Mm -hmm. um, hey, Lee, let me uh, say one other thing that it's important. Um, in January of 2019, SCID, uh, all states added SCID to their newborn screening panel. And it was a uh, long years and years effort from many people throughout the nation uh, that lobbied on behalf of um, adding SCID to the newborn screening panel. And so I think that that you know, is a celebration in part uh, due to David's legacy. Um, and um, there's a school in the Woodlands named the David Elementary, and they have uh, an event every year, the David Dream Run, and all proceeds go to the David Center so that the children, uh, unrestricted, so that to, for children cure and for patient care, and for the families. So there's a lot of things that make us very proud and very happy that have happened throughout the years. We live with the heartache and the sorrow, but there is a, a balance for us and that's how we can continue. I am, um, I just, 
uh, every day I, I think of David. We, David's father and I remember him and talk about him often, as well as our son, whose life was very brief, but very meaningful. He gave David Philip a chance at life, and David Philip's life and death gave others a better chance at life. Even though I believe he wanted to be free from his bubbles, he had an understanding of what was going on, and he knew science was working hard to find a cure, and not just for David, for all the others that I had mentioned. Um, so I think it's important that people not feel sorry for David or for his family, because there was a lot of joy in, in raising David. He had a great personality. He uh, understood. It was thought that David would, it, everything would be explained to David as he asked and according to age appropriate, of course. And, you know, for me, he could have asked to leave his bubble at any time. We would have been forced with huge decision to make, but he was accepting of, of his condition and waited patiently. And there's a great lesson for us besides the medical side of, of David's life. And that is that he gave us a lesson in handicap cannot just be endured, but nobly endured. And um, so, you know, we, we celebrate David's life and David's legacy and others remind me how important his life was to, the, to their children and to their family. And we do thank you for your interest in, in David as we celebrate what would have been his 50th birthday. When the two of you talk about contributions, um, was he, how frequently did he have to go into the hospital? Like, were there a lot of um, studies done with him? No. The only thing they did with David was they cultured him periodically and they drew blood. That was the only thing. Now, when David was about three or four or five months old, um, now, children with skid are born with no T cells and no B cells, no tonsils no lymph nodes, no thymus. And I hope Dr. Davis will confirm. I, I confirm that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but to um, cement the theory that David was in fact immune deficient, one of his doctors who had a very uh, fair skin, they took a snippet of her forearm and they grafted it to David. And do you know, he never rejected Dr. South's skin. It just grew. So if he had had any kind of immune system at all, he would have rejected it. Is, isn't that correct, Dr. Davis? That is correct. And that was one of the um, pieces of evidence that allowed his doctors um, to uh, move forward with the bone marrow transplant that really help us understand uh, the immune system and, and how it works and how bone marrow transplant can be used as cure for some children with SCID. So bone marrow transplants, that, that, uh, that concept came from David? It was, he was one of the, uh, the first patients who had the bone marrow transplant and, uh, and had a, a complication where we were able to study um, what was the complication so that we could prevent that complication in others in the future. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Davis, what, what is happening going forward? I mean, do you guys have, um, do you guys have more um, procedures and treatments going forward into the future that you think look pretty promising for kids like David? Absolutely. Um, right now, bone marrow transplant is uh, continuing to be used for uh, primary immunodeficiency disease. And also gene therapy is another uh, specific treatment 
that is an advance for specific children who have severe combined immunodeficiency. Um, we are uh, also using biologic therapies. So there are a vast number of treatments that are available um, through the David Center. And we're learning new diseases every day. Currently, there are over 400 primary immunodeficiency diseases that can be treated. Um, and, and so we are on the front, um, the, I would say the front field of, uh, of obtaining this knowledge. Very good. Um, one of the greatest advances which um, Carol Ann DeMerit uh, referred to is newborn screening. And that has uh, impacted survival for children with severe combined immunodeficiency because we are able to detect the disease early before they develop an infection, which could be life-threatening. Because we can detect it early, then we can actually um, do the treatment of bone marrow transplantation in order to cure them earlier in the disease. So survival has improved. Mm -hmm. and, well, she said that just began in January, 2019. So um, that's like one of the more newer advancements. Yes, for well, it was uh, when the last two states joined, but other states had been, <laughs> sorry, Dr. Davis, <laughs> other states had implemented um, uh, skid to newborn screening. So the last two states, then it was January 19th, but I think they, they had been, um, using a skid uh, to the newborn screening panel for about eight years prior. It was a long um, uh, time and there were a lot of people involved. And it was Dr. Shear was um, a promoted newborn screening for Texas, as well as the staff at the David Center, Dr. Celine Hansen, Dr. Javier Chinin, and that's just those that I know here, but there were others in other states that uh, were promoting SCID for the newborn screening. And um, it, it wasn't just for SCID, it was also, they can all immune disorder because through, uh, through the test, through the heel stick, they can monitor the level of T cells and B cells. Is that correct, Dr. Davis? Correct. So we're able to um, use um, blood and, and uh, look at the DNA in, the, in T cells uh, in that blood to, uh, to see if that baby is producing T cells. And so it's, it's a really fantastic um, technology. And, uh, and David's mother, uh, Mrs. Demerit, is, uh, I think, modest in, in really highlighting that the doctors were, uh, were um, promoting this because uh, she has been a staunch advocate for newborn screening in Texas and also throughout the nation through her um, position on the board of the Immune Deficiency Foundation. And so um, really newborn screening uh, in Texas um, was uh, in part due to David and, and his legacy. So his 50th anniversary is a wonderful time to really celebrate his legacy. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Um, Haley, one thing um, that I would like to add to um, David's story, and, and uh, this is separate from, from him, but important to me. Our daughter, Catherine, was um, said to have been a carrier. So um, all from the time she was three years old. So fast forward you know, 20 years, she married and wanted to start a family. Finally, um, there was a, a way to determine carrier from a non-carrier. And so then Catherine, it was determined that she was not a carrier. And they told us pretty much, you know, all along that she probably was. So her gift to her father and I was that she presented us with two healthy sons. I have two grandsons. Mm -hmm. Uh, Christian James, who is 26, and Cameron David, who is 24. So that, in a way, is the rest of the story. Do you think, um, do you mind or do you think they would mind if you shared a picture with me that I could put on this broadcast? Um, 
I don't think they would mind. I, I will have, you have to, a family photo. Um, hmm. Handy. Um, I guess I could, uh, through my text, through my. Yeah. Yeah. You can, um, well, maybe not. I didn't give their last name. So I think their names are sufficient. I'm going to think about that. Okay, sure. Why don't you no problem. think about it, Carol Ann, and should you decide, you can send it to me and I'll forward it on to Haley. That would be great. Thank sure. you. Yep. Um, this is supposed to air today at five o'clock. Okay. So um, just, I mean, you have time, but just um, let me know before five o'clock, I guess. Yeah. Um, Dr. Davis, could you, um, we kind of jumped into things before I got your uh, name on camera. Could you tell me your first and last name and how to spell both? Sure. <clears throat> Carla Davis, C-A-R-L-A Davis, D-A-V-I-S. Um, I'm the chief of the section of immunology, allergy, and retrovirology here at Texas. Dr. Davis, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Did I ask you all of the questions that you I, think? I so oh, I think um, that that was really everything that I wanted to uh, share that today we no longer have to use a bubble for children with immunodeficiency disease, and we can provide a cure because of David and his legacy. Mm -hmm. I could only imagine um, how special that is that, you know, you'd be able to touch and hold your children on a regular basis, you know, um, I don't, do they, do they really grasp how um, special that is f for these families that it didn't used to be like that? No, we do share. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. No. Oh, sorry. Whoever's right. <laughs> Through uh, the, the David Center and, and the physicians here that were really touched um, by David's physicians um, you know, we share his story. We have David's picture um, on the walls in our clinic. So the patients that we see who have primary immunodeficiency are inspired by his story and, and his legacy when they come to our clinic. Excellent. Haley, um, there's a Texas Children's Hospital in the Woodlands and within the walls of Texas Children's Hospital, there is also the David Clinic which is an extension of the David Center. And the location, when I first heard that they were building a freestanding hospital, I thought how appropriate that a Texas Children's Hospital would be close to where my David slumbers. And I often think about that. It's a fantastic collaboration that we've had and relationship with the uh, David Elementary School and David Fun Run, um, our section and, and the David uh, Clinic, as well as the Center for Human Immunobiology um, collaborate so that we can bring the advances to the clinic from the support that the community, David's community provides. So we're so thankful for that. David's contribution to science was dramatic and I'm proud to have shared in David's life. That's a nice way to put it. Um, you guys are doing great work. I'm very honored to have gotten a chance to interview both of you today. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to me. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. Yeah, I um, again, I have to say, I'm so sorry for all the technical trouble at the beginning. I, I swear I was on time and then everything went haywire, but that's the pandemic yeah. for you. <laughs> Thank you for your interest in, in helping us to celebrate what would have been David's birthday. Oh, yes, I like yes. to think that David would have been um, a husband and a father and a scientist. He, he definitely uh, has been described by his uh, main immunologist, William T. Scherer, as bright, intelligent, um, courageous, and brave in his fight against germs. Yeah. He, really uh, a uh, special patient. And we were very happy to have David at home with us. I hate to think what our lives would have been like had we not ha been able to have David at home. And it was not an easy task to um, have David come home for the four to six weeks and then go back to the hospital. And mostly it was, I think, although they never said was to give his mother a break but also to um, 
clean and re-sterilize the bubbles when he wasn't, you know, at the hospital or when he wasn't at home. So, um, you know, there's no regret. And I think David's life had purpose. And I think um, when the when the design David's life when it was time. David has rapturous freedom now. And I'm okay. That has to bring you some comfort. Yeah. Well, I'm, I am sorry for your loss, but I, um, like I said earlier, I, I admire that you're still being such a good mother to David by continuing to share his story and advocate for other children like him. I think it's important to make him proud. Mm. 